Remember everything I made you forget. Episode fails to remember that we haven't forgotten any of this, or at least not enough to warrant the full minute of previously ons. And we're done with the chicken fried rice. Can't we make it airborne? Why? So it's more contagious. Ever since the last episode, it feels like the writers are trying to lay the groundwork for another spinoff called COVID-V. And I assure you, no one is here for it. If an airborne virus gets into the super able population, it could spread like wildfire. The soup's going extinct doesn't so much solve Shetty's problem as much as it ensures that she will then have to deal with a bunch of Batmen. We're coming to you live today. And I'm coming to you live with this in for news position. Andre being one of those people who can't just slide into the booth because they have to sit at the end to exert dominance and collect tolls or some shit. We need Kate. She's the only way to get Shetty to expose the woods. She is not. You could go after the doctor you stopped Sam from killing that one time. <laughs> and then what? Post it on Insta? Are we supposed to believe this world doesn't have one reputable news outlet? No Boston Globe? And not even a Gen Vicky leaks? They're just gonna twist it like they twist everything else. Extolling Vought's prowess at manipulating the proverbial nipple of truth. But maybe you didn't do that because now I'm destroying the evidence. Coming up with solutions that only work via time inversion. Thanks again, Christopher. You have so many things. Doesn't mean you need to go through and touch all of them with your hands that I've seen you punch through bodies multiple times, but haven't seen you wash once. Our family was on the plane. Tying Shetty's backstory into the plane Homelander sink is just another great example of how Gen V compliments the boys. But it's also a great example of this show relying too much on the boys instead of creating its own narrative identity. You want me to increase the viral infection rate. Getting so drunk you perform a monologue of plot details conveniently within earshot of our protagonists. <sighs> Stealing one of the more questionable plot points of Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. You'll want longer. Title of my sex tape. What you're describing goes beyond neutralizing. It's a war crime. 95% of what your boys have done can be labeled as war crimes, Grace. A man who works for me, one of your fellow countrymen, although I doubt you travel in the same circles, has the same rage. It's like Mallory knows these details are irrelevant to Shetty. Still, she's giving them anyway for the benefit of the audience, even though the audience knew she was talking about Butcher around the part where she said, A man. You don't want to go down that path. Um, she's telling you she created a virus to kill all the soups on the planet. Not only do I think she's already gone down that path, I think she's paved it and started installing street lights. Did you get all that? From a phone muffled under your pants pocket and coat? What they got was the audio equivalent of applesauce. Joe has time for this. Oh, hi. You look so badass. The characters in Sam's play are one-dimensional and underdeveloped. That is f***ing amazing. Fun? Sure. But amazing? Settle down. <laughs> We're superheroes. We can do whatever we want. And the best you came up with was a cold slip and slide? Dork. Episode undersells the darkness of this scene and pretty much any scene with Rufus once you realize that with a reputation like his, the only imaginable way people are hanging out with him is that he is just constantly messing with their heads so they can't remember how much of a dirtbag he is. Other than that, I can't imagine a good reason why anyone would get within five feet of this guy. Also, he's way too happy and pain-free after what we saw happen to his dick. Did it grow back? Did he steal one from someone else? You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to, want to be just like him. Oh, good. Another character with daddy issues. This universe is maxed out on characters with daddy issues. Can we try some other issues? It's strange how unprepared this society is for all the problems that come with soups. Polarity is having a seizure, and an apparent side effect is him uncontrollably using his powers. Now, maybe this is the first time they're dealing with something like this, even though I highly doubt it. But they sent this regular-looking ambulance and paramedic crew, which is a Vought company, by the way, to deal with this soup-based problem. I guess I'm saying that out of necessity, they could and should be better equipped to deal with these kinds of unknowns than paramedics in the real world. It was cool to see this thing get crushed, though. Do something! Being a medical professional that should have been trained to do something and yelling this at the person currently doing something. Hey, Sloan. Is Sloan the most interesting background character because of how chill everyone is about her presence or because she's an alpaca that's into BDSM? Debate. Go cockblock someone else. You think it'd be harder to block the c if you can't see it coming at you. None of us wanted to see her put her jaw back. We wanted that to be a permanent consequence of her being a terrible person. We have no idea who this is or why they saw a fight that had nothing to do with them and decided it needed lasers. Holy shit. 
RIP to the eardrums of anyone watching this episode with headphones. Also, beyond random excitement, I have no idea what any of this is about or why the guy standing behind her in the question line suddenly needed to grab her shoulder. It's almost time to leave this place. Don't get my hopes up, Indira. I know we still have another episode to send. We'll hide out in the green room until it all blows over. Employing the Shaun of the Dead doctrine. Your blood, there's compound V in it. Welcome back to America's favorite game show, Do I Buy That? Where something unbelievable plays on the screen and I tell you if I buy that. So the ultimate question today is, can Marie sense compound V in the blood of others? Mm. Oh, so close, but I'm not buying that. Join us next time when we'll revisit Gendry's run back to the wall and pretty much all of Game of Thrones Season 7. Why are you telling me this? Because we understand each other. Citation needed. I know that you've fought for every f***ing thing you've ever got in your life. Except for her powers, right? But the first black woman in the seven, she has real power. She's friends with the vice president. This series really knows what it's doing here in showing us the slow and insidious way the world uses temptation to corrupt people who are otherwise well-intentioned. I'm on the edge of my seat watching Marie confront these realities. And it's getting a sent off for making me even more invested in her story. Two paths, Marie. You have to choose. You can't have both. Not using the obvious cake metaphor because we live in a time when one can no longer trust what is and isn't cake. Oh, sh**. Polarity's running at 14 RPMs. Now that Luke's dead, someone else in this group really needs to get a license. Tell them what you told me. This school is a front. Thinking that mind manipulating your villain into expositing their plan to the protagonist somehow gives you a pass. <laughs> Not on my watch. You all leave a path of destruction behind you. Have you ever considered that might be because of the broken psychological conditions created by institutions? Like the one you're currently the head of? It's time. Yeah, I thought it was safe to resume the chicken fried rice. This show needs a disclaimer. Don't help. One of the problems here with Kate's power is that she's so general with her speech that her pushes become subjective. Like the word help in this case could be interpreted very differently. If by chance Marie was able to believe that Shetty surviving to stand trial for her crimes was a worse punishment than death, then she possibly could have worked around Kate's command and saved her life because her intention was to harm Shetty and not help her. Do you know what you've done? Justice. Damn it, Sam. All it took was one afternoon hanging out with Rufus to turn you into a villain? Ooh, what's happening here? Are we doing a slow reveal as the camera turns? Exciting. And the mystery person is? Uh, not surprising at all. You and I, we have the same goals, right? So you're really going to ask this during the shadowy parking garage meetup, Dr. Cardosa, so you can die as one of those shining examples of an intellectual person with absolutely no street smarts? What's even the point of Victoria giving out these blank business cards? Oh, it's to make the nosebleeds more visually dramatic. He wants to touch and feel everything. Okay, that is a normal amount of sex tapes. Should an avowed superhero reformer be speaking at a college for superheroes? Now, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus here, mostly because I don't go that close to public transportation. <laughs> Yeah, I remember my first Krabby Patty. You will not control us! This isn't about control. Al Pacino. Attica, Attica, Attica. I was shitting myself for you. That's pretty gross. Seems kind of weird. They'll handle it. We handle it by not handling it. Tell them what you told me. I ate Dion Warwick. The virus isn't very contagious, thank God. And it's delicious. <laughs> 